Hey folks, it's great to see you on the weekend. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend of April 19th. Now, this isn't exactly what you were planning on seeing this weekend, is it? Not what I was expecting either. We had originally planned to do an interview this weekend with ticker LUDG. This is a company working with cancer research. Well, not too long ago, they implemented AI to help them do this, and wow, what a decision that was. The AI, in a very short amount of time, has discovered four or five different cancers it can eradicate. Folks, we were so excited to bring this information to you this weekend, but Marvin had a bit of a crisis arise this weekend, which he must tend to, so we had to postpone the interview. But I promise, we will reschedule. I promise. So I had to go out and find another hot penny stock for us to look at. That wasn't too difficult. We've got a very hot penny stock. This is AGBA, ticker A-G-B-A, AGBA Group Holdings. Now, this is a fintech company working over in the Asian market, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, places like that. And the company just had news come out last week that they're involved in a really sweet merger with Triller. Are you familiar with Triller? They're just like TikTok, except TikTok is popular over in China, where Triller is popular in India and America. Well, Agba already did one merger. She did it back in November of 2022. It was a little different, though, because Agba was a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. Don't know what a SPAC is? What that is, is a company that doesn't have any business. They're not making any money, but they come onto the major exchange anyways. They secure a ticker and then they go hunting for a company that wants to get on the major exchange, a company that's private or maybe on a lower exchange. Then they cut a deal with them and they move up onto the major exchange. Well, they did that back in November with a company called Tag. But rather than Tag put their name on the ticker, they kept Agbuzz. So Agba is tag doing their fintech business. So Agba finished the day on Friday at $1.25 and she was up over 21%. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, which you've got to appreciate a lot more than the ones on the OTC for a lot of good reasons. First off, major exchange stocks are free to trade. You can buy your shares and sell your shares for no cost. You can also trade pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with OTC stocks, and there's a lot of money to be made pre-market. There's some huge bounces there. And what I really like about the major exchange, there's a lot more money up there. There's a lot more volume up there, and there's a lot more rules up there. <laughs> I got to say, I appreciate all the rules, all the extra oversight. That means that we have less risk involved with major exchange companies, which is definitely better than what we got to put up with down on the OTC. So what is AGBA all about? Well, we've got some information over in their deck, which is a brochure. It's a digital presentation of the company, lays out their information really nice and easy. So we're going to start right there. This is the company's deck. We're on page 15. There are a total of 25 pages. You can find this brochure by going over to their website, agba.com, and hitting the tab, Investors Relations. Now, obviously, we're not going to go through all this information, but I do want to give you a good feel for what this company is about. They call themselves a financial supermarket, and we're not referring to groceries. We're referring to their size. Supermarket, meaning they're super big. They've got a lot of financial products. The company has been around for about 30 years. Their major shareholder is Mr. Richard Zai, and we're going to touch on to that a little bit more. Workforce, they got about 1,500 people, and they've got over 2,500 different financial products, including insurance, investment products, mortgages, and such. Now, the company works with a lot of other companies, over 100 of them over in China, over here in the United States, and you're going to recognize a lot of these companies, BlackRock, Fidelity, HSBC, MetLife, Sun Life, JP Morgan, and I always appreciate when a company is working with companies I know. That sets me at ease. I'm not worried about them being risky. They tell us that they are the largest independent financial advisor in Hong Kong with 1,200 advisors, 200,000 customers, 
and projected revenues of $100 million. They also tell us they are the largest healthcare brand in Hong Kong with over 800 clinics, 1,200 doctors and specialists, and another 300,000 customers. We got 200,000 up here, 300,000 down there. That's 500,000 customers, folks. Now, the company has got four primary businesses. They have their distribution business, platform, fintech, and healthcare. And there's a lot of information about each one of these, and we're not going to get into them deep. We're just going to generally look at them. But all of them, really, are fintech businesses. Their distribution business, called Agba Financial, sells a wide range of financial products to retail and corporate customers through various types of sales and representatives. This is how they make money through commissions. Their platform business, which they call One Platform, provides access to products and supporting services to internal and external distribution channels. They make platform fees for this. And they've actually got multiple platforms. They've got one for wealth management. They've got one for international property. They've got another one for mortgages. Their fintech business, they've got two divisions, Tandem and Xi. This division invests in fintech companies, capturing strategic benefits as well as financial rewards. These are their investments. This is where they make money by investing. And then finally, their healthcare business, Agba Health, provides healthcare services to corporate customers through a network of doctors and clinics. And here they make money through service fees. Now, they tell us down here that in April of 2023, Agba entered into an agreement to acquire 100% of Sony Life Financial Advisors, a Singapore-based financial advisor and insurance broker. The acquisition will be completed May of this year. It isn't closed yet, so we've got another catalyst here. Along with Agba expansion into the Greater Bay Area, this marks Agba's first foray into Southeast Asia and a key milestone. We have great visions to be the only RIA in the region that will operate in both Hong Kong and Singapore, two of the world's biggest wealth management hubs. And it's funny, I was going through a lot of their information and they primarily just want to deal with wealthy people. You can see that. They say that their business was founded on the belief that health and wealth go hand in hand, if that tells you anything. They tell us here that over the next six months, Agba intends to redomicile itself to the United States and become a fully-fledged domestic corporation. Now, folks, they could be doing this for a lot of different reasons. I'm only presuming here. This is a company working over in Asia. China has a lot of control over them. They're working with fintech, lots of money. They're working with wealthy customers, lots of information. China doesn't like that information to get out. Plus, now they're going to be working with Triller, a social media company, another hot topic for China. Maybe they just want to get out from underneath China's heel. Maybe they're not wanting to be snagged and grabbed when they start to become successful, which is what China can do, just take over the company. But if they come over here to America, maybe they're safe. Last thing I want to share with you here is about that big investor, Mr. Richard Zai. He is the largest shareholder of Agba. The Zai family is one of the wealthiest and most respected families in Asia. Mr. Zai is the chairman of Fubon Financial. Fubon Financial is one of the largest homegrown financial institutions in Asia with a market value in excess of $30 billion and assets of almost $400 billion. Now, I am not alluding to any deal being made between Fubon and Agba. What I'm saying here is that Mr. Richard Zai is the door between the two companies. He could make something happen. So that's always a back burner situation. So the company's making decent revenues. They've got lots of customers. They are diversified into different fintechs and they've got huge investors watching over them. So what was the relative volume around the company today? 
Wowza! That's a huge increase, folks. That is over 15 times their normal volume, jumping from a daily average of about 8.5 million shares for the last 30 days to over 128 million today. That is over 1,500% increase in volume. That's a lot of excitement. Share structure for Agba. Not bad, presuming it's right. We've got an outstanding share count of about 74 million. No clue what our float is. Could be all the way up to 74 million. Won't be higher. And it could be considerably less. All the way down to a million, which is the least it can be on the NASDAQ. So anywhere between a million and 74 million is where our float's going to be. Market cap for the company, we're at about 93 million right now. Financials for the company. Well, this is a bit strange and I can't explain why, but they have money on the books. It just isn't showing up here. They've got absolutely nothing here. No worries though. All we got to do is dive into the most recent financial. And we can get all the information we need. Now, the most recent one is the third quarter of 2023 ending September. We're still waiting for their fourth quarter and their annual reports to come out. So we're taking a look at the assets here. All of the numbers we're looking at are the real numbers. We don't have to add any zeros to these. And we are comparing September of 2023 to the end of 2022, which was nine months ago. Total assets at the end of September were 82 million. Back in December, we were at 100 million. So we've lost $20 million worth of assets in the last nine months. Total liabilities for the company. Currently, we're at $62 million dropping 12 million from 74 million back in December. That's a good thing. Subtract the liabilities from the assets, we end up with positive stockholder equity of just over $20 million. Checking out the revenues for the company. September 2023, we were at 13 million. September of 2022, we were at 13 million. Doesn't look like there's been any growth going on here. But take a different look at the nine-month period in 2023 compared to 2022. The nine-month period in 2022 was only $20 million. We more than doubled that in 2023, jumping to over $41 million. Total operating expenses exceeded revenues. We did $24 million in expenses, $13 million in revenue, which means we're running at a loss of about $13 million. Let's take a look at that news now. Not a whole lot of news over here, but what we got is important. We've got a piece at the end of February. Agba Group is positioned for Hong Kong's rebounding macro environment with business refinements and growth strategies. What they're talking about is recovery from COVID. While the rest of the world came out of COVID and started building back up, China kept falling back down. They were having a real hard time getting back on their feet. And right now they are doing it. And the company believes this is going to be good for them as well. Then it was on the 18th, we had our first mention of the merger with Triller. And on the 19th, we had a full-fledged news press come out. Agba and Triller merged to create a $4 billion powerhouse, unleashing a game-changing power in digital content and financial services. Transaction expected to value the combination of Agba and Triller at approximately $4 billion. The majority shareholder support has already been obtained by both companies, Agba and Triller. At the closing, Triller will be a wholly owned subsidiary of Agba, and Agba is going to own approximately 20% of the combined company. They tell us that Agba announced today on the 18th that they had entered into a definitive merger agreement to combine Agba, the leading one-stop financial supermarket in Hong Kong, with Triller, the leading artificial intelligence-driven social video platform. With its Amplify AI technology, Triller seamlessly integrates across major social media platforms generating over 500 million interactions quarterly across 436 million consumer accounts. Triller serves as a bridge between users and Fortune 500 companies like Meta, Verizon, Nike, Disney, and Pepsi, helping enhance user engagement and bolster their digital presence. <laughs> what they're talking about is advertising like Facebook does. They're going to be dealing with Meta, Verizon, and Nike, putting up advertising for them on their social media site. 
The company, by strategically integrating Agba's financial services expertise with Triller's innovative suite of AI-driven digital content and software-as-a-service offerings, this merger establishes new benchmarks in the convergence of technology, finance, and media. The combination of the two entities is expected to supercharge growth. Mr. Wing Fai, president of Agba, stated, With a rich history of setting records and making bold moves, we believe Triller is now on the brink of an exciting future. Its groundbreaking technology, coupled with an aggressive strategic business model, positions it not just as a formidable competitor to tech giants, but as a potential game changer in the industry. Now let's get some more information about Triller. I've jumped on over here to Wikipedia to get this information. Triller is an American video sharing social networking service. The service allows users to create and share short form videos, including videos set to or automatically synchronized to music using artificial intelligence. It was back in June of 2020, the government of India banned TikTok. Because of that, Triller saw a spike from less than 1 million users to 30 million users overnight. In July of 2020, Triller sued ByteDance, the Chinese parent company of TikTok, for infringing patents relating to video editing. And I don't know how that settled out. In August of 2020, the U.S. President Donald Trump signed an executive order which threatened to ban TikTok from operating within the United States. Following this order in news, Triller jumped from number 198 to number one in the app stores in the U.S., while TikTok dropped down to number three. At that time, Trump also joined Triller himself and posted his first video August 15, 2020. Now, the company is all about music videos. You're going to make videos with music in the background, and they've licensed all that music, so you don't have to have any problems getting it or using it. They're working with Sony Music, Warner Music, Universal Music, Merlin Network, and National Music Publishers Association. Now, check out what you can do here. I edit my own videos, so I understand exactly what they're talking about. And this is a big deal. The Triller app allows its users to create music videos, skits, and lip sync videos containing background music. The app spotlight feature is its special auto editing tool, which uses artificial intelligence to automatically stitch separate video clips together without the user having to do it themselves. The separate video clips are created to the same background music, but users are able to shoot multiple takes with different filters or edits each time. Once the auto edit tool stitches the individual clips together, users can rearrange and re replace clips as desired. So imagine I've got a song I'm going to do a lip sync to and I'm going to sing it. And I want to go through every single one of my hats. I want to change my hats over and over all through the song. Well, I'm going to have 30 separate little pieces of me singing. And I want these all together with the music in the background, not bobbled and not catching. So they got AI that can fit all of my pieces together perfectly so that my lip syncing looks like it's one solid video rather than 30 of them all brought together. You cannot imagine how much frustration and time that saves a person. The app is divided into three video feeds. You've got one feed for creators, you've got the social feed for the followers, and then you have your music feed. Triller has attracted celebrity users all kinds of them. I don't know all of them. I know Justin Bieber. I know The Weeknd, Alicia Keys, Post Malone, Kevin Hart. They also have had Pitbull on, Snoop Dogg. They've also done some sporting events with boxing and basketball. So they've got a lot of things that they're doing. Now, honestly, when I look at the site I'm not real crazy about it. I think they've got a lot of work to do. It doesn't look all that appealing to me, but what do I know? I'm just one influencer and I don't even use it. But I got to say, an AI stitch program to edit my lip syncing video, oh my God, I would love to try that just to see how easy it is. 
All right, so that's what's going on, folks. We've got a merger between Triller and Agba. Agba is making good money. Triller is very, very popular. TikTok seems to be in trouble, always being pressured. We don't want it here. India don't want it. There's a lot of people that will move from TikTok over to Triller. And once Triller gets backing, financial backing, they're probably going to start to grow as well. So I'm quite excited about this deal. And I didn't mention it, but I want you to pay attention to their warrant as well. The warrant was moving faster on Friday than the stock. The stock may jump 50%, but the warrant, which is a lot cheaper, may run 200%, 500%, 1,000%. So don't overlook the warrant, folks. All right, let's go take a look at the chart now for AGBA. Tell me that's not the chart we're looking at. Yes, it is. That is Agba Group Holdings, ticker AGBA. I've got this opened up to a three-year, one-week view on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So this straight line back here, this is back when she was a SPAC from November 2022 back. She had not closed the deal yet, so her stock was worth $10.00. Doesn't matter if we bid it up or bid it down. It is worth $10. Well, she was actually climbing. It was being bid up very slowly and very steadily up to a high of $11.81 when she closed the deal in November of 2022. And look what happened. Immediately, she crashed from that high bubble of $11.81 down to a buck sixty, And there was no problem with the deal. There was no problem with the company. The problem was China. It was just a bad time for a Chinese company to be making a debut on the major exchange. China was not doing well. And to be completely honest, SPACs weren't doing very well either. There was a lot of SPACs that had deals that were closing that a lot of people were watching, lots of excitement building up, and as soon as they closed, they did the same thing. They crashed really hard. She had a nice bounce here off of that $1.60 all the way up to $6.40, came back down to a low of 32 cents halfway through March. And then on Friday, we had a huge burst of volume and a huge jump in price, shooting way through the 50-day SMA on our three-year chart. Now let's come on down to that six-month, four-hour view. Wow, look at that explosion, folks. We had a huge jump, and I think we are just getting started. Our high hit during this run of $1.66, bouncing off of that low of $0.32. Cents. You're looking at about 500% run right there. Now, it's obvious tell she was in a downtrend all of this time, but she wasn't acting wimpy. She was showing us she wanted to climb with every single one of these bounces. She was way deep underneath the 200. She didn't just get up to the 200 and tap it. She broke through it, but came right back home. Didn't even bother to try to stand on it. Why? It's too steep. That's a slippery slope. If she tries to stand up there, she's going to tumble and fall, and she's probably going to fall lower than where she started from. Right now, she's jumping up and coming back home. Dun, 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 dun. Jumping up, coming back home. Dun, 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 dun. And she does this over and over until she has an opportunity to break out. When is that? When the 200 gets flat. When it starts to get level and she's not going to slip and fall. And that's when she made her first breakout. She got up on top here, bounced on it a few times, took a dip down to this low bubble, and then started meandering around on that 200. And then the news came out and she took off. We had a big jump on the 18th and it continued to climb on the 19th. And folks, I'm thinking she's going to continue to climb. Honestly, in my opinion, I'm thinking this could easily go to $10. A couple months down the road, I don't know. People are saying she could be worth $20, $30, $40 a share because she's a $4 billion merger deal. Time will tell. But I am believing she's going to hit $10. I'm not saying she's going to stay there, but I'm looking for a strong run out of this. All of our SMAs have crossed the 200. They're all nicely combed and climbing. Our nine day is getting far away from the 20 day SMA. Watch for a snapback. The price is pulling away from the nine day. Watch for a snapback. Oscillators are looking real good. Every single one of them is pushing up and climbing, including our RSI, which is in the overbought at 71. 
I like overbought. Just because it's up there doesn't mean it's going to come down immediately. Look how long it's been up there. Virtually two days. So don't be running away just because the RSI is red hot. It's coming down to our 20A one hour view. Really flat, right? She bounced off that low bubble and she just suckled to this 50 day, 20 day, 200 day SMA. They're all together there. And then the news came out. We had that big spurt right to the high. Pre market, she jumped up, came back down to her nine day SMA, bouncing on it hard. At the end of the day on Thursday, she started the drop and then at pre-market, she started it all over again. Another big tall rip just before the bell, fell back down to the nine day SMA when the bell rang and she's been riding that. And after market, she is continuing to climb on Friday. All of our SMAs are looking good. These are better than the four hour chart. Our oscillators, uh, actually, they're showing some cooling down right now, though the chart doesn't show any cooling down. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is coming down, though she's over her pink and way high. She is cooling off. Your PPO, percentage price oscillator, is a lot like your MACD. You read them the same. You want the blue line on top of the other line. You want them each climbing. The difference between the two, the MACD uses the full price and the percentage price oscillator, yes, uses a percentage of the price. And our RSI is starting to climb right now. She is at 65. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. Should be a rip. All right, we've got our 200 day SMA, which is definitely on an uphill climb right now. We've had some big bounces coming down to that 200. Right now, our price is going sideways as the 200 is climbing, the 200 is closing in on the price. I think the price will wait for the 200, which is a sign of strength. When the 200 gets there, there's a very good likelihood that she's going to ricochet and bounce off of it and start to climb again. What do our oscillators say here? Well, let me zoom in on this one. It's a little tight to be seen. Ah, she is over and starting to climb. Definitely got a push up on our ADX, which means that straight line tells me whatever trend is on the chart is going to continue. This is all based on straight lines. As soon as that line changes, it doesn't matter what direction it goes. If it changes and it's not going the same direction, it means your trend changed. Well, right now we have an uptrend starting. She is showing that. As long as that line keeps going in one direction, our uptrend is continuing. Our MACD, that is climbing right now. Everything is just starting to heat up again. Here comes our RSI. She was down at 54. She's pushed up to 60. Folks, I'm liking AGBA. I don't know how much I like Triller, but I know everybody else does. I know there's a lot of attention being paid to this, and that's what I like to trade. Stocks that have crowds around them, stocks that are getting a lot of trades. It's not always about the volume. It's about how many people are there, and I think this stock's going to have a mega crowd sitting out front on Monday. So I'd be watching this stock if I were you. I'm going to watch it, and I'm me. There's a lot more information out there, folks. Go over to uh, ABGA's website, go through their presentation, their deck, do some Googling on Triller, see what you can learn. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.